Apple event day. Apple event day. There was a big event today. Uh, September 15th. We did a little companion live stream, talked about it, followed along with many audience members. Uh -huh. We were curious what was going to go down. Time Flies was the name of it. Go watch the recap if it's still there on Unbox Therapy. <laughs> Copyright. You can go. You can go watch it. It's still yeah. there. Uh, we saw new Apple watches. We didn't see anything about iPhones. I can't say I'm surprised. I didn't expect to see iPhone stuff here. Well, most people did not. We've heard of the delays. We knew that uh, the watch was slated to be talked about. We knew that the iPad was slated to be talk talked about. I don't know. The iPad might be a little more interesting to me, but we'll lead it off. We'll kick it off with the watch since Apple kicked it off with the, with the watch during the event. And I'm just going to do a quick version of it. If you didn't have time to watch the, the whole event, quick in the sense that I'll just move through the topics. Mm. Okay. The important sure. topics. So... Because somebody's going to comment, what you mean quick? I've been on this Lou Later show before. I didn't take you an hour anyways. Uh. So I'll move through it for you. It's going to be half an hour today. All right? Speed. Right now, Will's like, you're wasting time talking about how fast it's going to be instead of just being fast with it. Mm. The Apple Watch updated, improved Blood O2, the big feature they wanted to talk about. Bunch of new colors they wanted to talk about, including first time ever a product red variant. This blood oxygen thing, I told you during the broadcast, it's a big deal. Uh, when you go to the emergency to the emergency room, when you're in any kind of terrible shape, your blood oxygen level can let you know you, you ain't good right now. Huh. Now, the Apple Watch was already doing the heart readings with the ECG. Yep. And now it added this to it. Now, so now it's even more comprehensive. A lot of people pointed out to me, Lou, other smartwatches have had this in the past. Look, it's true. I understand. I feel you. But of course, as you know, if you're a tech fan, when Apple does something, it brings tremendously more attention to the feature. And they just got this big time footprint. And then regular people start using this technology far more and it gets adopted. And so that's why it's always interesting and meaningful. So you get the Blood O2. They put out a bunch of new watch bands as well. I love this idea of the no clasp watch band uh. and it's going to come in two styles. One has like a braided look to it. The other one has a smoother finish, an infinite loop, as you liked to mention during the broadcast. You just slide your hand in. It's going to expand. You're going to slide your hand in. And did they show a demo of it? They did not show a demo That's of it. That's what I realized. Well it's done, like, Will. How do you... Well done. On. I'd like to see. The solo loop. I assume that it has some elasticity to it, and it will stretch around your hand and then spring back around the wrist. Hmm. But then what about sizing? Mm -hmm. You got a lot of questions. So do I. Yeah. We'll get our hands on it. Right. We'll figure it out. They say it's soft. They say it's stretchable silicon. Rubber. Silicone. The solo loop is ultra comfortable, lightweight, and surprisingly easy to slip on and off. Now, you know... I feel the need to mention you get the arm hair. Some of us, we got the arm hair going on as well. Yeah. Does it and if get, it's rubber? Does it ooh. pull a no? Does it pull a little bit? Uh -huh. We're gonna find out. Uh, also, of course, there's a bunch of other improvements uh, on the internals. A bunch of new watch faces. It's gonna be faster, more capable. They are also going to sell an Apple Watch SE. So that was the Series Six, starting at three ninety nine. They're also gonna do an Apple Watch <laughs> SE at two seventy nine. And they're still going to sell the Series 3 at $199. They're releasing Friday, September the 18th, so very soon. You can pre-order, of course. The Apple Watch SE is the affordable option that looks similar to Series 6, but it doesn't have those brand new sensors in there. Mm. So that's important to know. You don't get that flashy new stuff. Uh, yeah, I'd say that pretty much covers it for a quick recap. More colors, new bands... That new O2 sensor. And then actually, I guess, leading into some of the other services and then some of the next topics, the fitness component, mm. which they made a big deal of and now can integrate with this fitness product that they're putting putting out to compete with the likes of Peloton, an actual guided fitness experience. Mm -hmm. Watching a video, tracking your vitals and all the rest of it at the same time. So that's another kind of component of the watch piece 
They also announced a new iPad Air that looks like an iPad Pro without the iPad Pro price. In fact, this thing looks so compelling next to the iPad Pro at its price that it makes you wonder, who the heck is going to buy an iPad Pro right now? It appears that the only thing that the iPad Pro 11 would have on this new iPad Air would be the 120 hertz display. Mm. Otherwise, you're looking at the you're looking at a new chip. You're looking at that. I don't know if the screen to body ratio. I don't know if that bezel is going to be quite as slim. And I guess, of course, you, we need to mention there's no Face ID here. If you really enjoy the Face ID, but to me, I'm okay with the Touch ID that they added back. That's probably the biggest development here. Mm -hmm. Apple brings back Touch ID in a new product, not in, in an old product done again, like in the, in the case of the iPhone SE 2020. But they actually developed Touch ID, a new formula, a new product to fit into the power switch in the smallest Touch ID sensor that they've ever done. Mm. And they've done it on this device in the absence of Face ID. And it makes you really wonder if we're going to see this feature show up in the phones once they eventually get to that event. It would make sense. It would make a lot of sense. And as I told you during the live presentation, I'm one of these guys on various smartphones that I use on any given day, in any given week, in any given month. I like to have both of the unlock features enabled so that I can flip between whichever is more convenient, whether it's going to be a fingerprint-based unlock or a face unlock. Mm -hmm. I'll use both depending on the time, place, etc. So this one is tiny. It's on the power switch. It's elongated, and it's going to be a, a nice little natural function to use your index finger to unlock the iPad Air and, boom, be right into the system. It's got the A14 Bionic chip, 40% faster CPU, 30% faster graphics, and 70% faster machine learning with the neural engine. Uh, I should also mention that Apple took time to, to reference many other popular laptops and how how much faster and better their iPad's going to be and how you're going to slap it on the keyboard case and you're going to be off to the races. Mm. And they really believe that this is a substitute. And if it is, it's interesting because of the price. Mm -hmm. The camera's obviously different as well, but I don't know how many people are buying iPads for the camera performance. No. It's not such a big deal. The pencil will interact in the same way. It is really like a budget iPad Pro. Yes. And in some cases, it's superior. And at $599, when you see it stacked up against what else is out there, this actually, I mean, I'm not going to say it's affordable. It's still pricey. But it's more affordable than you and I were guessing as we were watching the presentation. Mm -hmm. It beat our expectations that we were kind of learning about it in real time. And I think, I think Apple is kind of paying some attention to the market here. Yeah. In the same way that they saw success with the re-release of the iPhone SE, or re-releasing an older model, and they saw people gather to purchase that, maybe they're sitting there saying, okay, this cost thing is for real. The market is kind of soft, but people spending. And we're going to start with price, and then we're going to map everything else around it. We got to get down to $599, and they did. And like I said, I mean, $499 is better than $599, but this thing makes their $1,000 product, or $800, $900, whatever the pro is, it makes it look expensive, for real. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. So... I think the iPad Air, if somebody's in the market for an iPad, this is the one to go for right now. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of competition for it because we've seen, we haven't seen a, a lot of adoption in the Android tablet space. And certainly with the pencil and, and the OS, I mean, it's got its own dedicated OS, iPad OS. It's, it's a unique proposition and it only gets better at 599. So uh, resolution of the display, it's liquid retina, by the way, 2360 by 1640. And... Uh, I mean, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, USB Type-C, obviously, the, the Pro has that as well. Optional LTE, 20-watt fast charging. It's an iPad Pro. They just didn't call it Pro, mm -hmm. and they charged us for it. Unless Pro has to have 120 hertz, but it doesn't on the phone. It's the same software as well. Same software. Yeah. I mean, it seems better. It just seems better in every way, with the exception of the 120 hertz. So anyway, keep an eye out for that one. When does this one come out? I think that's a bit later, right? Let me just get this straight. When can we order? It will be available next month. All right, that's all we know at the moment. Compatible with the uh, various accessories as well, including the smart keyboard folio that I, I think I mentioned that earlier. Five colors, silver, space gray, rose gold, green, and sky blue. 
Sky blue gets called sky blue, but for some reason green is not any type of special green, yeah. which makes me wonder if they have another blue planned, which we had talked about with the next iPhone, them potentially doing like a midnight blue. Mm -hmm. So then you would have to differentiate right. sky blue. And and so maybe that is a little, uh, what would you, maybe there's a little Easter egg in there. That's not an Easter egg. Yeah. A little tidbit. Yeah. Apple is no longer including a USB power adapter with the watch. And they kind of just snuck it in when they were talking about sustainability. They were talking about carbon footprint. They were talking about carbon neutral. You know all the buzzwords, Will. Mm. All the things people want to hear in 2020. Yeah. You're just, and then she said it in front of the whole garden in Apple headquarters as uh -huh. well. So you're just envisioning green and trees and it all uh -huh. feels so good. And you're like, wait, so I buy an Apple product and all of a sudden green trees start sprouting up everywhere. And their Apple's like, yes. It's subliminal. That's exactly what happened. Mm. You're right now you're in a concrete jungle. You buy the Apple watch and this sprouts right next to you. Yeah. Instant garden. Imagine. Of course, I'm joking. Relax. Anyway, within the presentation talking about the 100% carbon neutral by 2030, which, by the way, is that's cool if they can pull it off. Uh, they snuck it in there that in order to get there, they're going to have to stop giving you power adapters with the Apple Watch, which, of course, is our first kind of indication that this is the way they're going to go with everything. And we talked uh -huh. about it with the phones, and it's been a really polarizing topic. People say, of course, Apple's going to just put that profit in their pocket. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Apple's never going to say that. And everyone, there's no way that everyone's going to agree on this. And I still don't know how I feel about it because there's so many Apple users that are still on that old 5-watt power adapter mm -hmm. that we're looking to upgrade. And they're never going <laughs> to be charging real slow. Mm -hmm. And that's less important with the watch than it will be with the next phone. But, of course, it gets us thinking about the next phone because they, they are now officially on record saying, no, 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 we got to save the environment. It's absolutely no power adapters. But they're going to make it available in their store for 20 bucks. Oh, yeah, don't you worry. Yeah. The 5 watt, they're selling for 20 What do they sell the actual one you would need for the iPad? The 30 watt? Uh, no, I believe they with the iPad they have an in-between, no? Uh, hold up. Do they not sell the in-between? I thought there was like a 15-watt. Anyway, yeah, so go to the 30-watt, the official Apple-branded 30-watt, and that's going to be 50 bucks. USB-C. Wow, okay. That's a few dollars, ladies right. and gentlemen. So hopefully you got one of these things lying around, like I said, with the watch. I think it's less important. People are gonna. It's going to be a much bigger topic of conversation when the iPhone thing hits, but here we have our first indication that it could go this way completely. Hmm. And of course, the threat for those that are nervous about this reality is that other manufacturers follow suit there was a rumor that samsung would do the same thing too mm -hmm. it's again much like the o2 sensor from the beginning apple does it and then everybody says okay that's the market now yep let's go so we gotta keep an eye out on that one last uh, apple related story from the event is in relationship to the apple one subscription service this had been also rumored for a long time prior to the event and I have to say, I found it, I think it's a pretty impressive package. I think Apple's going to do all right with it. I was curious about how aggressive they would be on pricing. Mm -hmm. And they come in here and they, they basically say, look, you get all your Apple stuff starting at $14.95. And by all your Apple stuff, I am talking about iCloud. I'm talking about Apple Music, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade. That's going to get you started. Then there's a more advanced product that will also give you Apple News Plus and Apple Fitness Plus, which is the new fitness service that I mentioned earlier, that on its own is about 10 bucks a month, which mm -hmm. as well seems like a value next to Peloton, who charges up to like 50 bucks a month for their fitness-based mm -hmm. product where you follow along the live exercise. Now, I don't know how the two compare. I'm not a user of these services. I presume that the Peloton thing has a real uh, loyal fan base. Uh, they, they got high profile on the bikes and everything. Yeah. I ride the bike, but I don't watch anybody. I just ride the bike. Oh, not a Peloton, but an actual bike. I just have a, I have a, I have a, what, what do they call it? A stationary bike. Yeah. And it's a pretty nice one, but it's no fancy gadgets. I'll just put my phone, watch whatever I want, uh -huh. get on the bike. No one is screaming and yelling at me. Uh. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll try it out. Yeah. But every so often I'll do that. Apple wants a piece of that market. It's a big market. In fact, 
Peloton stock immediately when the announcement took place, it dipped. I don't know where it's at right now at the time of filming this, but people have drawn the correlation. It's up a little bit. It's 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 still down on the day from its high, but it's uh, actually it's up on the day right now, but it's down from its high during the day. So people don't know what to do. They're split. I don't know that how competitive the thing is directly because Peloton sells you the hardware. They sell you the bike and it's a culture. It's a whole culture. And Apple's kind of a newcomer to the space, so we'll have to see about the adoption. But by them bundling it with everything else and and having success with the watch, already doing so much health tracking, they may have success here. It's a good move. You put it all together. Too. Yeah. So anyway, to break it down for you, fourteen ninety five gets you started with the services, all the services except for News Plus and Fitness Plus. Then you go to 1995 for a family plan that is also missing those two services. Oh, then you go to 2995 and that gives you the premium plan, the premium family plan that includes everything including the most cloud storage at 2 terabytes. Okay, so let me break this down. I mean, if you have a family. Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't even say a family. It just says share with up to 5 other people. Yeah, it could be friends. Could be anyone, a group of friends. Yeah. 29.95 and five people get Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, Apple Arcade, two terabytes of iCloud, News Plus, and Fitness Plus. Five people. Hmm. I don't know. You do the math on that. Yeah. That's making Spotify look expensive. Mm -hmm. And coupled with Netflix as well. If you can get away with just watching Apple TV Plus, which that's going to be rough. You probably still got to keep Netflix. Yeah. Because they don't have the content yet. But I'm just saying, man, if you're going to use the fitness thing... Well, if you're going to use the iCloud storage, two terabytes of iCloud storage, that's going to run you a few bucks as it stands anyway. Hmm. And then uh, Apple Music, which, again, if you're comparing it to Spotify, and I kind of feel bad for Spotify at the moment. You know Apple and Spotify don't really get along. Mm -hmm. And they kind of go, they go head to head in a big way. Spotify pricing for premium starts at 10 bucks a month. But for anything that you share, the family, which is six accounts, it's 15 bucks. 15 bucks a month just for the Spotify. So you see Spotify, the stock is down a little bit too, isn't it? Over the last little while. I mean, that's today. Yeah, it's dipping. It's dipping. Apple's coming for your services big time. I think it's a strong move. I think it leverages some of the advantages that they have in the, with the ecosystem and the variety of services. I mean, they talked about the Apple Watch on the kids and they just, man, they tie it together, don't mm -hmm. they? And so anyway, starting at $14.95 a, with, with $14 a month for the individual, which saves you $6 if you were to buy those services independently, all the way up to the premier account, which you can share with five people, it saves you $25 a month. Maybe people will actually try the Apple News yeah. Plus now <laughs> since they're going to get the pre premier account. So it's called Apple One, and uh, you can check it out for yourself. Just keep in mind that the fitness component hasn't launched yet. It'll come out in a bit. Oh, also the watches, the new watches will include three months free of the fitness program. Mm. Well, you, this is a guided thing. You watch a person, they're doing the jumping jacks, yeah. they're doing the push-ups, they tell you to do it as well. Mm -hmm. And you follow along. Would you give that a shot? Uh, I don't use Apple products. No, let's say let's say you did. Let's say you were in the ecosystem. Well, I use a MacBook. But... Let's say you were in the ecosystem, all out iPhone guy, Apple Watch guy. Would you try out the oh, yeah. guided fitness? Yeah. You'd definitely. give it a shot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation 5. I got this weird story, this weird PlayStation 5 story reported on IGN, but it was originally via uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg does this report stating that PlayStation production is going to be cut. Uh. By 4 million units because they can't get the chips done fast enough, you know, to custom chip that they're working on for this oh. unit for the system and that supply issues uh may not be an issue immediately but eventually will because this is difficult to put this whole thing together sony gets mad about it because the stock dips yeah. a little bit they're like hey man and they Why reply say saying while we do not release details related to manufacturing the information provided by bloomberg is false we have not changed the production number for playstation 5 since the start of mass production they say how dare yeah. you Bloomberg, I thought we were buddies. How dare you? Does anybody remember that? Yeah. So they, the the new total after the 4 million unit subtraction would have been around 11 million units because they had really big plans. Mm -hmm. They had, I mean, 
a tremendous interest and they were ramping up all this interest in gaming recently. We've seen it on the channel. Everyone's talking about it. Everybody's gaming. Yes. And so I don't know where this report comes from, the original one. Well, I mean, it comes from Bloomberg. Actually, let's see this. Daniel Ahmad, a senior analyst at Nico Partners, stated that this production delay will hit PS5 supply during 2021. And Sony is planning on using air freight to meet demand this holiday and ship as many units as possible. So I don't know. Is the I don't know the track record on this particular individual. Obviously, Bloomberg is usually fairly thorough. So whether or not the information is correct, Sony doesn't want that out there right now. And that mm. makes, I mean, obviously that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Supply, we're going to have a much better sense for as we get closer to the launch date. And immediately after launch. This, are these things actually available? Mm -hmm. They are going to limit the number you can purchase. We've covered this to a certain extent, but for the time being, Sony is denying the fact that they're going to have to uh, cut their production target. Mm. It all depends on demand, man. It all depends on demand. Yeah. If, uh, if it's blazing out the gate, then maybe, yeah, maybe they can't meet the demand. It's possible. It happens mm -hmm. with products all the time. Mm -hmm. And it has happened with consoles in the past. Or if for whatever reason, some bizarre, I mean, it's 2020 has been bizarre enough, but some other bizarre stuff happens mm -hmm. and, and you can meet the demand. And then, and then, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways it could play out. Uh, anyway, quick preview. They're having an event tomorrow. It is at what time? There's a PlayStation event tomorrow. We already looked this up on the show. And now people are just frustrated. They're saying, are you looking this up again? I want to say 1 p.m. Pacific, which would be 4 o'clock for us. It's usually around that time. It is 1 p.m. Pacific. No, that's 4, 4 p.m. our time. Yeah, Eastern, yeah, 1 p.m. Pacific is what I said. I was. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's tomorrow. So join oh, us back here, either here or on Unbox Therapy. We'll be... Uh, doing a companion stream for that event. Of course, you're going to want to know everything about it. Mm. And who knows? Maybe they'll even mention this uh, topic and say, no, 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 no. We're raring to go. We're good. We're good to go. We got millions. Yeah. Highly unlikely. But we'll be here. We'll be following along and you can follow along with us. Google Fiber is going to start testing two gigabit internet for a hundred bucks. Mm. How exciting is that? I picked that up. Two gigabit. I love it. Oh, yeah. hundred bucks. Okay, let's do it. Of course, this is only going to launch in certain markets. Fiber, you know, they've got this, uh, apparent, apparently they've got a commitment towards affordable fiber in the uh, regions in which they do business. And uh, up until now, they've had, uh, they've had 100 megabit per second plans. Oh, they've, sorry, they've dropped 100 megabit per second plan. They've got the one gigabit, uh, one gigabit plan going on. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're Google, you uh, you care very much about fast internet. That 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 fast internet unlocks all your various services and advertising <laughs> to, to end users. <laughs> They're streaming. It it uh, it unlocks fast YouTube, so they yeah, can there you go. put their ads in and everything yeah. else. And so, anyways, they're speeding it up to the next level. 100 bucks, 2 gigabit download, 1 gigabit upload, and this is only $30 more than the pre-existing gigabit plan. 1 gigabit plan, single gigabit plan. Subscribers will be provided with an unspecified Wi-Fi 6 router and a mesh extender. Google Fiber says it can offer faster speeds due to its approach to network design. So you don't need any hardware. They got the hardware, and you know, they do sell the their own dedicated networking stuff that you could plug into your current modem but in this case it's all in one mm. it's all together and and uh, presumably fairly quick it's going to be available next month in nashville tennessee and huntsville alabama for the preview period it will eventually start rolling out in other cities in the fall uh it's currently available in 19 cities google fiber so those cities that already have google fiber products will likely see this two gigabit thing roll out in the fall exciting times for fiber users exciting times for internet users mm -hmm. those with a need for speed i didn't plan on doing that that was good it was a good name for a game 
Need for Speed? Yeah, Need for Speed. Yeah. Do they still make uh, those games? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one blew me away. Not that one. Which one? Oh, did I not send this story to you? Oh. Hold on, hold on. Show me the other ones. Show me the other ones. Yeah, this uh yeah, this one. Oh, okay. Just uh we have um uh some airlines are introducing flights to nowhere. I just love that headline. A flight to nowhere. Yeah. Sounds so mysterious. Where do I go? Mm -hmm. That's what you said. What are they doing? Yeah. Apparently people miss flying and airlines miss people. <laughs> well, that's pretty obvious. Those people, they bring the revenue. Mm -hmm. In Singapore, they are talking about the idea of potentially having some sort of sightseeing flights that give you the flight or vacation experience without having gone anywhere. And of course, this has to do with the lockdown and the inability to freely travel throughout nations, as one could have done prior to 2020. This lets you have uh, a getaway without going anywhere. You'll fly around for a couple hours and land back home. Hmm. Um, the sightseeing is, <laughs> is fine. That's kind of cool. Go but, on. Uh, go on. What? You're going to have to do the airline thing. Like waiting and waiting in line, checking out or checking in and all that stuff. It's uh, it's mm. sightseeing though. That <laughs> here are some here are some quotes from would be participants of these flights to nowhere. I think it's a great idea, and I'd be willing to go. Uh, Singapore is an island, and I am used to traveling, so I definitely miss flying. I would pay mainly because I miss traveling. The whole process of checking in, the airplane food, and of course, the flight attendant's warmth and smiles. Hmm. Is, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It definitely is weird, but I kind of get it. People are lonely, man. They, they, they're they used to having feeling a sense of freedom and an ability to get up and get around and go on road trips, and I guess they can still do that. But get up in the air. Hmm. A lot of people, they spend a lot of time in the air and they can't do it anymore. And uh, definitely the airlines are looking for a way to interact with these customers. De I mean, definitely these airlines need a way to put people in seats. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't have too many options at the moment. So actually, it's not exclusive to Singapore. Apparently, similar things have been taking place elsewhere, uh, elsewhere in Asia. In August, a Japanese carrier flew a 90-minute scenic flight on one of its flying... Honolulu Airbus A380s. These would typically go between Japan and Honolulu, but instead, since they can't do that at the moment, or they're doing it to a lesser extent, I presume, they're trying to give a Hawaiian resort-style experience to the airport and on board the plane. Mm. So you kind of feel like maybe you went to Honolulu. <laughs> However, what you really do is you just fly over yeah. some various islands and, and that are nearby. Listen, airlines, they got to do what they got to do, right? If they want to make it an adventure, but also get some money, you know, they just they just got to do it. It's hard to imagine what you would charge for that. I mean, the person hasn't gone anywhere. They've gone up and come back. It's There's no utility to it at all. How f do you can't charge full, you can't charge what it would cost to go to Honolulu. No. So what is it, 50% of the price? It's such a weird thing to figure out because it's just really, truly uh, a day trip now. Yep. Would you I ever mean, Would you would ever to, consider doing this? Uh, Flight to nowhere, Willie do? Um, probably not. I mean, you could say... Maybe in Japan. You could say I did a flight to nowhere. You could say that, but I don't want to <laughs> check in. That's a lot of work. I know. Oh. I know. It's pretty wild. But uh, anyway, you guys let me know down in the comments if you would, if you're currently bored enough or lonely enough, <laughs> would you or you this? just love flying enough yeah. that you would consider a flight to nowhere type would, of experience. Would you? Well, I will say another airline listed here who's considering the idea, uh, EVA, okay. they are uh, the uh, Taiwanese airline. I flew with them. When I last time I was in Taipei, and it was a great experience. Now, yeah. that was a first class experience, but the hospitality was amazing. The food yeah. was good for an airplane. 
And I was very relaxed. Huh. And so I'm kind of in between. Okay. I can sort of see it. If they could give you the first class experience at a real budget price because they're not flying anywhere anyways, and you go up there and it's a hot towel and you're just watching some movies, mm. I don't know, man. I don't have a lot of time to relax. And when I used to take flights, it was one of the few times mm. you're you're sort of sort of turned off. You're kind of Yeah. I guess you don't have to get your bags or anything, right? No bags. Yeah. Interesting. Lighter plane, cheaper price. Yeah. Less fuel. I don't know what we're talking about. This is insane. Flights to nowhere. Uh, we have an update on the electric Hummer, which is coming up. It's a very subtle, secretive type of update here. We talked about this electric Hummer because they teased it a few times now. They keep showing us a little bit more here and there. Of course, the Hummer, very popular product all the way back in, when was it? 20... 2006. The, was the uh, peak. They sold 71,524 Hummers. That's a uh, long time ago. Yeah. Anyway, then people were against the whole gas guzzling concept. But now you don't have to worry about it because it's all electric. Hmm. So go ahead and guzzle away. And in this video, it's exactly what's going on. Sort of. It gives you a bit of a preview of this upcoming Hummer from distance. And then it shows you a feature called Crab Walk. And you see how that goes very well? How do you feel about that? Mm. That's uh, that's actually pretty cool. So it's a diagonal movement to the truck yeah. where all four tires are capable of moving in a singular direction, which of course would allow you to maneuver in such a way that would be impossible without the crab walk feature. For an off-road vehicle, this is kind of interesting depending on what you're trying to avoid. Maybe you're trying to avoid a crab. But also for a really big vi uh, vehicle, maybe trying to get into a certain parking spot. I would, uh, yeah. That or maybe just a party trick. Maybe yeah. that's a, the suggestion here in the D Jalopnik article. You know how people who own Teslas are constantly showing off. They can do, check out a party mode or I can play video, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you could imagine a bunch of dudes that are like, well, check out my crab walk. Mm. And then they throw it on the Hummer and everybody's like, whoa, all four tires going diagonally. Cool. Sometimes I mean, it's the, something. Sometimes the it's what something. does it say there? Sometimes the biggest leap forward is diagonal. Is that what it said? It of course, they try to make it a whole artistic thing. Sometimes the biggest leaps forward are actually diagonal. Ooh, mysterious. The world's first all electric super truck. They're not getting away from that super truck terminology. No. All right, last story today, Will. This one, uh, I don't know, you might appreciate it. I feel bad about it. It's a oh. terrible uh, situation. However, there this is so weird how certain video clips have a strange kind of unexpected satisfaction to them. And this mm. is one of those video clips. You will in this clip you will watch a train full of cars slowly get slowly smash against a bridge, but only the top portion of the train. And so what it does is it effectively peels off, cleanly peels off the lid of this train, but slowly. Yeah. And this is maybe just sheet metal. You look at it crumpling. You know? Look at yeah. the way it crumples and piles. And it's mesmerizing. I'm going to... Yeah, you can't take your eyes off it. Now, I know you're watching this, Will, thinking to yourself, why don't they just stop the train? And believe it or not, this is how long it takes to stop a train. Oh, yeah. Tra yeah trains yeah. don't want to stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the slow part. That's the, it's guessing. so slow. Jesus Christ. And then... At the end of the video clip, you see some of the damage inside of the train itself, which was oh. carrying cars, unfortunately, and the cars themselves oh, are just wrecked. Oh, that one looked like it got smashed. Look at that one. That one oh. got tied up. Look at them. The cars just got squashed. Because the way, I think at first, as the, as the roof 
was crumbling is kind of crumbling inwards and mm. scraping across mm -hmm. the top of these cars, which are packed right to the top of this train. Mm. So obviously it's an unfortunate incident, but it just it makes for this very bizarre clip, which is difficult to take your eyes off of. You never know what you'll find on the internet on any given day. Shout out Jalopnik, couple cool articles. There you have it. Many things happen with Apple today. Many things will happen with Sony tomorrow. So keep it locked. I think it'll probably stream on the Unbox Therapy channel, but we will do the companion stream. Me and Willie Do will be back here with you tomorrow for PlayStation 5. Tomorrow? I gotta put this up.